But with the U.S. Election Day just a little less than three weeks away. 2020 U.S. presidential elections. These polls reveal a tight presidential race. 2020 elections in the U.S. As the U.S. presidential election is on the corner, in this video, let's try to understand the process of U.S. presidential election. The presidential candidate must be a natural born U.S. citizen. He or she should have completed 35 years of age and should be a resident of USA for a minimum of 14 years. The term of US president is 4 years. So US presidential election takes place once in every 4 years. A person who has already served as US president for 2 terms can't run for the 3rd term. This means a person can be president of USA only for a maximum of 2 terms. This limitation was not mentioned in the original constitution of USA, it was only added in 1951. Now let's get into the election process. There are two major political parties in USA. One is the Republican Party and another is the Democratic Party. In both these parties, there may be many aspirants who wanted to contest in the presidential election. Among those aspirants, each party has to choose only one as their presidential candidate. It is for this purpose, primaries and caucuses are held. In primaries and caucuses, members of the party choose the delegates who will then vote and decide the party's final candidate. So primaries and caucuses are party level elections in the states of USA, which usually takes place between the month of February to June of election years. National convention is a grand event conducted by both the parties to finalize their candidate. During the convention, the delegates who are elected by party members in primaries and caucuses cast their vote for a party candidate. The candidate with most delegates vote gets the party's nomination. Then the party's nomination for president is formally announced to the public. So at the end of the national convention, both the parties will have their candidates ready to fight against each other. For 2020 elections, Democrats have nominated Joe Biden and Republicans have chosen Donald Trump as their candidates. Once the presidential candidate is finalized, he or she will select a running mate who becomes the candidate for vice president. For 2020 elections, Joe Biden has chosen Kamala Harris as his running mate and Donald Trump has chosen Mike Pence as his running mate. Once both the party finalize their candidate for president nomination, the general election campaign kick starts. Presidential candidate from both the parties travel the country, explain their views and plans to general population and trying to win the support of the potential voters. Rallies, debates and advertisement are big part of general election campaign. Presidential debate is a public debate held between presidential candidates during the general election campaign. In the debate, candidate expose their political opinion, public policy proposals and criticism of them to potential voters. The general election, which is also known as popular vote, usually happens in the November month of the election year. In the general election, all the eligible voters in every state across the country who are above 18 years will vote for one president and one vice president. But they will not be voting directly for president or vice president. Rather, they will be voting for a group of people known as electors. These electors are the representatives or delegates of people who will be voting for the presidential candidates. The number of electors from each state is based on congressional representation which in turn is based on the population of the state. For an example, California is the most populated state and has 55 electors. On the other hand, a state such as Montana which is geographically large but has a relatively small population only has 3 electors. Once the electors has been elected, 
it's almost clear who the president will be. However, president won't be officially elected until the electoral college cast their vote in their state. Electoral college is the institution that elects president and vice president of USA. Electoral college consists of 538 electors from across the country. Usually, electoral college votes to presidential candidates in the November-December month of election year. All states except Maine and Nebraska apply the principle of winners take all. It means, for an example, California has 55 electoral votes. Let's assume that 35 supported Democrats and 20 supported Republicans. In this case, Democratic candidate has won the election in the state and takes all 55 electors, leaving the Republican candidate empty-handed. To become a president, a candidate needs 270 electors vote out of total 538. Even if the majority of the people of USA voted for a candidate, that does not mean that he or she will win the presidential election. The candidates taking majority of popular vote might not win a majority in the electoral college and thus losing out on the presidency. For an example, in the year 2000, Democratic nominee Al Gore won more popular vote than the Republican nominee George W. Bush. But Bush won 271 votes in electoral college as compared to 266 vote won by Al Gore. As a result, Bush became president of America in spite of having lesser popular vote than his opponent. So winning majority in electoral college is as important or even more important than winning the popular votes. Once the final process of electoral college voting and counting is over, in the January month, the US Congress officially announces who the president is and the presidential term begins on the inauguration day.